First of all, Ahlam, give me an introduction about yourself and Mangrove for Mankind. Great, thanks uh, uh, Kothar and thank you everyone who came the other night on our uh, live, which, which didn't work and thank you for showing up again today. Um, so to tell everyone a little bit about M4M, it's an initiative that started in August of 2019 when uh, the Amazon fires were, um, you know, were, were, the Amazon uh, forests were, were burning and, the, you know, the fire was all over the news and it was such a difficult time because, you know, you already felt the climate crisis, but then to see it burn at the rate of like, I think it was like one football field per second or something like that. It was, it was a crazy, uh, crazy rate where it was burning under. So the, the panic really raised at that time. And um, Sheikh Hashem and myself um, started to talk about it. And we really, you know, we were thinking as individuals, and I'm sure a lot of people must be feeling the same way. You want to do something, but you're not sure uh, if if all these links online, is your money going to go to the right place? Is it actually going to go into stopping the fire? Is it actually going to go into uh, planting trees or not? And um, and so because we weren't sure, we said, uh, you know, the UAE is in a unique position that we have really strong diplomatic ties with nations around the world. And, you know, I think that we would be in, you know, how UAE always does things in an accelerated rate. And we thought that we would be in a unique position to be able to accelerate that help also from where we are. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started to research and we found, you know, some websites around the world where they, you know, you, you kind of collected donations for planting trees and, and things like that. And, and we liked the idea of how this was done. And there was, you know, people who would um, measure your carbon uh, footprint and then you could offset. And, and so we started to just look into all of those things. And then we, um, when we came to actually deciding what tree we want to uh, focus on, we chose the mangrove because uh, there are, first of all, like so many of them within the UAE. And uh, if we want to research, if we want to learn more about um, some, you know, the, the area where we're focusing on, we can just do it in our own home and we don't have to keep traveling to do this. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to depend on external expertise. You know, we have all the expertise here in the country uh, and all the means that we need to be able to do it at home. So yeah. that's why we chose mangroves to start with, but also there's infinite um, benefits to mangroves versus other trees. So once a mangrove tree is mature, so when I say mature, like 10 years and older, it actually, you know, research, uh, research shows that it sequesters, absorbs more carbon uh, between anywhere between four to eight times more than any like a ter terrestrial tree. So the benefit of it is huge, but also it stores so much carbon in its soil. So when you actually destroy a mangrove, uh, and you know a mangrove forest or an area with mangroves, you're not only taking away the source uh, of carbon sequestration; you're actually releasing like those hundreds and hundreds of years of carbon that's in the soil back into the atmosphere. So the result is actually a disaster. Yeah. So, so we actually uh, decided to focus our work in, in preserving more, most importantly, and planting mangroves. And the goal is to do it in every coastal country uh, in the world. And that's our big dream. But, uh, you know, we got to start somewhere. And we've been starting, you know, we started strong this year, alhamdulillah. I know what I like about Mangrove for Mankind, the concept itself as an NGO, have really provided a platform for entities, I believe, for entities who wants to support communities, who wants to engage with communities, like a lot of government and private, big private companies have that lack of connection with community. And I think Mangrove for Mankind, Mankind can really connect them to people through activities, programs, scientific research, and so on. And I know that you are working on so many exciting things. Even when Sheikh Hashem tells me about all the new things you guys are working on and everything, it's very exciting that an initiative like that is coming out of the UAE. And we're not just inspiring the people in the UAE, but inspiring people all over the world. But you, you kind of touched base on the, on the mangrove, the importance of the mangrove tree and why. Uh, but I want you to kind of give me more details because a lot of people think that it's just, you know, there are so many other things we could do for climate change. You know, 
because yeah. I I understood. Yeah, educate me, please, because I'm also learning throughout the process. I I understood that mangrove trees uh, are very easy to maintain as well. Is that correct? It's true. Well, like once once they're they're uh, they're sustaining themselves, you know, that the biodiversity just comes, and and it's it's uh, it's just amazing how how um, how many things also like as a cycle. Uh, depend on that that mangrove ecosystem and actually mangroves are home to uh, more than 3,000 fish species and with the decreasing fish stock in, in the world at the moment it's not something that we can ignore. Um, so many communities around the world who, who live around mangroves actually their livelihoods depends on uh, the health of the mangrove ecosystem in their area so actually when we're reviving and and taking care of mangrove ecosystems ecosystems in uh, more impoverished countries around the world, you, you're actually like uh, providing a livelihood for the people who live in that area. And, and, and it makes a huge difference all around, not just, um, you know, from, from one side, but it's, um, it's, it's enriching from, from so many different aspects. And I know that there are threats now towards mangroves. What are these threats besides yeah. caring for them and all of these things? I mean, one of the biggest threats is the shrimp fisheries, you know, because um, you kind of mess with the salination of the water, you mess with uh, bringing species that are kind of foreign to, to that area, and you're, you're introducing things that that uh, shouldn't be there, there's chemicals that's put into there that messes with the natural uh, flow of how life in, in those mangrove ecosystems need to be. Um, the, the charcoal and timber industries are, are, are a big threat. Uh, tourism is a big threat because obviously mangroves are um, coastal areas which are prime uh, tourism uh, destinations. So a big part of um, preserving these mangroves is, you know, first of all, government intervention, making sure that government is supporting these initiatives and making sure these lands are protected and untouched, uh, but also um, making sure that those mangroves, their life, you know, it, are more profitable than having to put in something something else in its place. So you have to make sure that the people who live in those coastal areas benefit enough from those mangrove ecosystems that they protect it with their lives. So it's not enough for you to just put like a coast guard and, and make sure no one is, is, is messing with it. But also once the community around it feel like it's, it's giving them so much, it's giving them so much fish, it's giving them their livelihood, then they will make sure that it's thriving and, um, it's preserved and and some of the most successful initiatives around the world that have done this um, that the protection of mangroves and the plantation they uh, that's what they've done they 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 go there and then they they hire locally you know local farmers local communities to make sure that they all feel so invested that they are like the frontline protectors of, of these mangroves area locals as well in these communities which is also a beautiful thing yeah yeah, and, and, and they're a big source of actually, they, they stop erosion, you know, they, they, they stop uh, natural disasters in a big way, like tsunamis and things like that. So they're, they're the huge source of protection um, of the coast. They provide like uh, early or uh, easy, easy food for like, um, uh, for, 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 for the fish that grow there uh, or, or, you know, in, in the early stage in their life before they move on to the corals. So it's an easy way for them to find food there. And so that the, the chance of their survival is even higher before they move on to the coral and continue their lives. So there's just so many infinite uh, benefits. You know, Ahlam, it's so interesting. Like, I, I know a lot of people obviously know about the mangroves and its importance for our existence as humans and for the animals around us and the habitat and all of that. But it's so unfortunate that people who are not in the sustainability sector or uh, within the environment sector don't know so much about mangroves. And I know that you've yeah. uh, uh, an initiative or a campaign called Painted Green. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this uh, campaign. Yeah, so, so this is an interesting campaign because like I myself, you know, I'm not environmental science. I never studied in <laughs> environmental science, but I, I just feel like all of us are um, 
you know, are at a place where we can't just leave it to the environmental scientists anymore to take care of this problem. The, the problem is big enough that every single one of us needs to look at in my circle, in my capability, what can I do? And that's where it started for me personally. I mean, my, my day job has nothing to do with, with an, an environmental science. And, and, and so that's how you make change. Yeah, absolutely. It has nothing to do with your day day to day. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I work in the arts and um, I, I was trying to think, you know, when the lockdown happened, it was just around the time where Enferm had picked up. And, um, and so we, we, we tried to think of a way to involve artists in this movement, because for as long as, you know, humanity has been around, you know, I, I feel that art, artists have always been the drivers of change you know, um, what they create and what they talk about is always in the front line of creating change for any society. So it was important for us to involve artists. So what we did was we um, shortlisted um, and selected six locally based artists, five of whom are Emirati, um, who, and they created eight paintings uh, inspired by mangroves and mangrove ecosystems. And we built a partnership with Bloomingdale's department store. And these paintings are on sale on the Bloomingdale's uh, .ae website um, and um, the, the proceeds from, from these uh, paintings will go 35% to the artist and 65% directly to our planting project so it's not M4M is not taking any money from it at this stage and Bloomingdale's is also not taking anything from the sales so um, I really urge everyone who's here to, to have a look on the Bloomingdale's website just type M4M uh, as a brand so M number 4 M and uh, you'll see all of the paintings. And you know, if you know anyone who loves art and is an art collector and is looking to do good, uh, please do support and uh, you know raise awareness of of this campaign. And we really appreciate it. It'll go a long way. To be honest, Ahlaw, I really love the idea, and I love the fact that these artists, some of them that I know personally, have actually collaborated with you guys because it shows you that the artist community are so involved in causes like like this and the fact that they've taken inspiration from mangroves and really are trying to tell the story and create awareness through art is just amazing and I think they deserve a shout out and I will definitely tag them in the video because they really deserve it and we want more people who can collaborate in initiatives like this you know, with NGOs and, you know, things that impact society, environment and so on. And I know that uh, Bloomingdale's Dubai, for example, I also want to give them a special thank you because the Thayer Group are in the heart of supporting local NGOs and, you know, local artists and community projects. So I have to give them the credit when, when the credit has to be given because we want to encourage more cooperation and entities to support initiatives like this. What Absolutely. What are the ways for entities to or individuals to support? So um, two days ago, we launched our SMS campaign. So, so the Bloomingdale's is sort of um, uh, one, one side of things, but we wanted also another means where anyone and everyone can contribute a little bit. So we have an SMS campaign running at the moment. So if you text uh, m for m again, letter M, number four and letter M to the number uh, 4231, uh, whether you're on do or to salat, it doesn't matter. You you can uh, text us and uh, text the number, and immediately you would be able to donate ten dirhams, which is the equivalent of ten mangroves in our upcoming uh, planting project, which will be announced uh, soon. Nothing. We spent so much money on like really random stuff. What is ten dirhams? If you do every month ten dirhams, or every you know, or every person in the family, like. For our own existence sake, I think this is the, a very, very affordable. Like, I mean, how much do we pay for an iPhone or a dinner out at Zuma or anything like that? You know, so. So this, true. And I know that it's all been uh, collaborated and managed by the Red Crescent, right? The SMS campaign and all. Yeah. So Emirates Red Crescent is our partner. And, and I want to share a really sweet story. A mother contacted me yesterday to say, my daughter is creating these little bracelets in her school and she sells them to students. And every month she gives that money to a different initiative. How much, how would, uh, how would it be if she could do like 20 SMSs to M4M? I said, that would be 200 mangroves. And, uh, you know, it, it, and that's the way where you engage people at such a young age, you know, children at that age, if this little girl 
you know, creates some bracelets, sells them, and she knows that because of her efforts, 200 mangroves were planted, and, and what, what an impact that made uh, in the world. She's never going to not do that. She's always going to be connected to Earth and, and the environment and, and our planet. So um, it's that, that, you know, planting that seed in people is what's really important, because then for a lifetime, they'll always uh, continue to, to take care of our planet. But I know that you're also keen to have more, you want to build this community. You have a community, but you want to build, uh, build the community even bigger and bigger, and you're looking for volunteers, scientists, and so on. Tell us a little bit about the requirements. What are you currently in need of, beside the, you know, the donation and the support, um, for people to be involved? Yeah, I mean, we have an incredible team of six volunteers at the moment. Sometimes we know what we're looking for, and sometimes we don't know what we're looking for. Someone will reach out to us and say, look, I have the skill set. I think I can do this for you. And we say, yes, great. Come come join our team. We meet once a week, and we kind of talk through it. And, and they're, you know, our volunteers are giving me such renewed hope and humanity because I'm like, how are these people so dedicated? <laughs> you know, you're, you, you're so used to human beings always doing things for money and and then you look at these people and you're like how dedicated like some of them have full-time jobs uh, I mean I'm, I'm included but like so mm -hmm. a couple of our volunteers they all have full-time demanding jobs but then they come at the at the end of the week and we say you know what have you done this week and they've done so much um, and some of them aren't working as well but treating this as a full-time job when they're just volunteering and just the dedication and the passion that they have is, is so, so good to see. And we get contacted every day by extremely skilled uh, individuals who wanna give us their time and their skills so generously. Um, at the moment, we are looking for an in-house uh, environmental specialist uh, to help us continuously create content and awareness uh, on all of our channels. And we're also looking for a social media manager. So um, if anybody is, is uh, interested in joining our lovely team of volunteers, which is like a family now, um, please do reach out to us um, through our website. And we'll be posting about it on social media next week as well. So, so you can comment and, and share with anyone you know who would be interested in joining. But uh, yeah, I mean, can we, our, our contacts are on, on the website. Please reach out. Uh, follow us on social media on m m Community. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. And uh, we're always connected and, and happy to hear ideas. Any last message for our audience? Yes, I mean, um, any contribution goes a very long way. Uh, I just want to remind everyone of our SMS campaign. Please share it with your friends, family, social media. You know, Tender Hums is, is really not a lot, but it goes a long way for, for our uh, campaign. Uh, and we really want to plant as much as we can uh, in our upcoming project. Uh, so the number is 4231. And if you just SMS M4M, uh, you will generously donate uh, tender hums to us and feel free to send as many SMSs as, as you like <laughs> um, and help us out. From my side, I really want to thank Sheikh Hashem and yourself for really dedicating time to do good um, and engaging the community to, to be part of this journey. And I can't wait to see M4M, not just in the UAE, but globally activating and supporting communities and bringing students, researchers, and everyone on board um, for one, one goal. So thank you so much, Ahlam, and good luck. Thank you so much, Kautha. It's been really great talking to you, and thank you for all your support always. Thank you.